for you, do you think if you stayed in Australia, you would have like developed the way you did when you went to the US? Oh, no way. No? There's no way. Like I just, no, because there wouldn't have been any reason for me to change what I was doing mm -hmm. before I left. What's up everybody, welcome back to AUSA Hoops Shoot Around. I'm Lockie Anderson, I'm here today with Ernest Docker. We're gonna talk about him being an AUSA OG, talk about his AAU experience, and talk about what college basketball is like. So we said from the jump, like, like so you were with AUSA from the jump, yeah, essentially. Pretty much. So like, sure basketball in the dungeon, yeah. working out every day, like that was, or not every day, but you know, the Fridays and stuff was mm -hmm. nuts, eh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, like, how for you growing up was AUSA like sort of important in pushing your development and stuff? It was important because, like, the on those Friday nights, it was only like it started off. It was just like two sessions a week, if that. Like, you usually it was just that Friday night, and basically just like ballers from all over Sydney, like the like the guys who were really serious and wanted to go play college basketball because we knew that's what this was going to be a pathway to get us there, hopefully. And so guys from all over Sydney, even like, you know, up in the coast and stuff oh, like that. Nice. Yeah, like there were guys traveling, like making trips yeah. to, just to come and hoop on a Friday night and work out against each other, just compete. So those were like huge, just like getting it, getting it in against each other and yeah, going it, against the competition. It, it sort of felt like, like it was like a, like, I don't know, like it, it it's, it's saying a cult is bad, but like but no. it was like a hidden basketball type of like hub, right? Yeah. You know, random guys would come here and there, but they were always really good players. Like like Kieran was there every week, right? So week. ended up being LSU player. Like mm -hmm. we had so many people that kept coming in and out like that. Even if we sit here and list names, we'd still miss them. So like that's, yeah, like we'd miss the names. We'd miss some of these people that are just like, you know, have been important, have been around AUSA forever. Like, oh, yeah. even I was talking to Lockie Boff the other day, and he's one of them that would come. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I completely forgot that, exactly, you know? Yeah. So that's like, yeah, it's crazy where it's come from, you know, it's, they didn't have facilities, mm -hmm. they didn't have really any of the basketball New South Wales type of clubs, right? No. We couldn't go to any of those places. Nah. We're at Shaw before, like they did their full revamp, you know? Yeah, like we were in the old gym, like the one where it was like dusty, like it was like a gym that my dad used when he, yeah. he was at Shaw, which is like 30, 40, 50 years old or whatever. Crazy. Yeah. Like it's something, yeah, it's something that a lot of people now won't understand, like with AUSA is like AUSA facility. Like we, we used to go on tours all the time. It was AUSA tours, mm -hmm. like camps, and yeah. then that's it, right? So you went to the original camp, right? Yeah. First one after in like Hornsby at Brickfield. That's nuts. Like, see, that's that's yeah. what's crazy. Like that, it was a basketball camp, and Reese was just trying to, you know, push the idea of doing college basketball and everything. And like, yeah. he was just had an idea, but like, for it to become what it is now, like, it's awesome. You know, we we went from wearing what the B great shirt. Yeah, so well, those B great shirts was <laughs> like that, and because they had like different colors and stuff. If you walked down with a B great shirt on yeah, in Sydney. Oh like, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, all right, cool. He can hoop, but like, yeah. uh, how do you get one of those? Yeah, we, like, can we oh, get one of those? I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> so, so describe uh, AAU to us, like in your eyes. Like, I know it's a big jump from AUSA right to AAU, but like, mm. going on tour with AUSA, AUSA, multiple times. Mm. Like, I know I went twice. It really helped me develop. But describe AAU from your experience. It's like, I like jungle it's like a jungle a little bit like there's a lot going on um but it's fun though like it's like you get to test yourself a lot uh it's yeah and it's it's like anything you can do the more you put into it the more you're going to get out of it um that first time was like it was like a bit of a oh okay like this is what it's like you know you play three games like you play like one game early in the morning midday and then like late at night and then like you gotta but you just gotta keep going you gotta like move on to the next game you can't can't like think too much about what happened last game and stuff yeah. like that so like it was like it was something where you know you just had to adapt to it a little bit it was fun though. I really enjoyed it because it was just like basketball all day exactly so, it was fun. so like describe the feeling when you like walked in to the to the gyms right because they're yeah. crazy like explain it to the people what oh, it's like man. when you walk into those gyms it's like uh it's like um Oh, uh, it's like semi-finals for, uh, for reps, yep. but it's a lot less organized and there's like it just mayhem everywhere. And there's like college coaches everywhere too. Uh, just like, it, it's, yeah, it's like that. It, Cause there's just teams everywhere, like on the sideline, on like the bleachers, like everywhere. And they're just, 
Yeah, everyone's just getting ready to play, basically. Parents yelling at you. Oh. Cameras everywhere. Oh. And also, like, you'd said reps, but, like, you walk into a reps final and it's two courts. Yeah, nah. This is you step in, there's two courts, and then two more, yeah. and then two more. It feels like it's never ending. Hallway, and there's, like, five There's more. another five courts, it's like yeah. Ridiculous. It's nuts. The only place that is somewhat like that is Penrith now, yeah. because they have the three two quarters. Mm -hmm. Bankstown, same sort of thing, but yeah. like these are full but like everything court, packed. packed out. Yeah. But one side is all college coaches, and one mm -hmm. side is just for the other teams and parents and stuff. Yeah. Like cameras always going, like just, it is actually unreal. Yeah, it's like what you see in those like overtime videos. Yeah. It's like real, it really is what, like, what you see. Yeah, so describe what went into going on two tours. Like, you went on your first one, a lot of people only get to go on one, right? Mm -hmm. And like I'm the same, I went on two. So describe to me what going on multiple tours done for you. Well, the first one, well, I, here's the thing, I knew I wanted to go play college basketball, like I knew that's what my goal was, so I was gonna do whatever I needed to do to get there, so. Um, but the first one was, great because it just kind of like prepare, it kind of prepared me for the second one which is where I got all my offers and stuff like that from yeah. um, the first time I kind of didn't know exactly what to expect but had a, a decent idea um, but the first one was good it just kind of helped me kind of prepare for that the second one where I really kind of yeah. played um, like knew what I wanted to do what I how I wanted to play yeah. kind of how to promote myself in terms of like on the court like yeah. how like I wanted a college coach to, to scout me, kind of. Yeah. So I knew what I was good at, knew what I wasn't good at, knew what I was trying to push for. Um, and I was pl also playing a little out of position the first time I went. So the second time I went, I knew exactly what position I wanted to play, how I wanted to play, and, and that was that helped me kind of get to where I, where I wanted. Yeah, exactly. So you went, did you go year 11 or year 10, the yeah, first so one? so I went year 10 and then year Yeah, nine. so because at that young age going over, because I went 11, 12, right, but like, Going at year 10, do you feel like it really pushed you again, like to adapt and realize, like you said, you went to your second tour and you knew what to do, but like, did it push you to adapt after going in year 10? Did it give oh, you like yeah. a push to go, oh, okay, I need to do this better? Yeah, so the first time it made me realize the speed change. So like over there is obviously like, it was just faster. And um, I wouldn't say stronger, but I would say definitely say faster in terms of just the speed of getting up and down. And um, so like, yeah, my fitness and stuff like that, I worked on that a lot move, going in the next tour, like yeah. being able to just run up and down, you know more consistently um, and stay at a high pace. Yeah. yeah, that was like one thing I definitely had put into my training after that second time. Yeah, so after two tours, you're obviously gonna have a bunch of good memories, right? On the court, off the court. Like, what was your best memory on an AUSA tour? Oh, so this one time, we so my first trip, we ended up getting into like the winner's bracket. Yep. So we were like, um, we were, like made it to like the top eight or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we had, uh, so all the, most of the other teams, uh, other AUSA teams were knocked out at that point. So they all packed out the stands to like cheer us on while we were playing. And that was, that was really fun. Yeah, like it right. was, yeah, cause they were talking smack and yeah. it was like, yeah, it was mad. It was it's good. It's good when you can get that sort of back at, cause like the Americans, they talk. Yeah. Their parents are there to talk. Their mates come and watch. Like oh, if yeah. you're in their hometown, like oh. we, I remember we played in Chicago or Milwaukee. I think it was when we were in Milwaukee in my first tour. We played a team. The one kid had like the whole grandstand, grandstand full. Like they're chanting at him, yelling at him, yelling at me. I'm like, what is going on? Like I'm just this random Aussie kid, like, yeah, like yeah. white, gangly. Like if people go on YouTube and they watch my highlight tape from the first time, bro, like people think I'm skinny now. Like I was little. So I'm like, why are you yelling at me, man? Like. I'm not even doing, I'm not even talking. Now I'll talk to him, but I'm like, I'm not even talking. I'm just playing. Yeah. You're like, come on, White. Come on, 10. Come on, 10. I'm like, what do you want me to do? That's I so can't Chicago. do it, man. <laughs> yeah, they were on me. So that's like, people don't understand that. Like until you go over there, you experience like the American way, you know, yeah. and the way they are and how much they love basketball and they want their people to succeed. So for you guys to be able to give that back and like hit them back yeah. and have all those AUSA teams, like yeah. they wouldn't have known what, what was going on. Yeah, because like, there's like two or three of the teams that were sitting there, they're all being loud as hell. Yeah. Like, it was fun. Man. Yeah. It was a really fun day. So when you went on AAU tour and AUSA, did you see any players like 
that have now made it to a higher level? Like, did you see guys that you were like, okay, I need to, like, I'm looking at him and I'm going, all right, you're very good. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, it was like, um, I, we played against, like, the game, that game, we played against a few guys who were, like, quite well, quite good. No, I don't remember any of their names, yeah. but they're all quite, like, they're all, you could tell they're all, like, yeah. like they were, like, high, high level D1s. Um, but also, we also, like, came, like, there was, like, Tyler Hero was playing on another yeah. court. Um, and he was, yeah, obviously like really good. Yeah. Like he, like everyone was like watching, like everyone was watching that court when he was playing. Yeah. So that was like, that was one guy I was like, okay, yeah, he, he can hoop. That's the experience. Like, I mean, I forget who we watched, but there were, there were people around. Like, I want to say maybe Ansel Kumpo's younger brother or something. Oh, like, wow. yeah, was there yeah. like when he was real young. There were a couple guys, but it was, yeah, it's that experience of like you watch him and you can tell there's a buzz around a player when yeah. like the crowds just start gaining you know so like when when kieran was sort of like all these offers were coming in on twitter like coming in coming in coming oh, in yeah. and it got tweeted and was like hey lsu is going to be there like to watch kieran hayward mm -hmm. that gym went from being just a random like normal ausa game like we always had and then right. suddenly there was a buzz there was people around yeah. you saw dp on the on the end like just come in for lsu and it was like okay this is what it's like you know it's crazy the levels that it jumps oh, yeah. and i think so, that like on these tours like it's actually dope seeing it because you don't see it over here right nah. the only time you see it is if a college team comes over here right like when yeah. ben simmons did yeah, right. someone, yeah but that's it like you but don't it's like very organized right? and it's one time you know there's going to be a buzz yeah, right exactly. where when you're on an aau tour and you're walking around a seven or eight gym and you just like stop at a court because it just pulled you in and you look up and it's Tyler Harrow just yeah. banging threes. You're like, yeah. oh, okay. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly. It's it's like, you know, like it could happen any day. It's weird. Literally, yeah, it's yeah. nuts. So a bunch of people watching these are going to be thinking like, why would I go on AOU? Why AUSA? Like, what would you say to someone that comes up to you and goes, hey, like, what do you think about me going on an AUSA tour? I like I actually get a lot of people asking me yeah. about it and I say like you know if you're serious about playing college basketball I would highly recommend it because yeah. it, you know you just get used you get a, you get a chance to go over there and experience um, the culture like the basketball culture because it's obviously a lot different not a lot different but it is it, different. it's different it's yeah. like it's just different um, take it a lot more seriously over there if you're taking it seriously if you're serious about playing college basketball that's I would just recommend it to anybody yeah. because you like you just need to experience um, going over there and that shows like that's the thing right is like sending film from here yeah. that like they're not gonna one they're not gonna understand like the level you're playing at but yeah. two also like they're not you they're not really taking you seriously because you they might not feel like you're taking them as seriously because you're not going over there to yeah. them to like really get in their face like look I'm serious about playing yeah. this yeah exactly yeah I'm exactly here. that's that's one of those things that like we're trying to make I was making TikToks and stuff yesterday so I'm like typing out ideas oh, and like yeah, when it yeah. came down to like recruiting and you know basketball and stuff it was like like going on an AAU tour gives you that such an advantage like I remember I had highlight tapes like high yeah. school like whatever reps whatever it was all there sending it out and it's just like radio waves right sometimes mm -hmm. some schools be like oh yeah i like you but whatever and as soon as you go on that aau tour and you're there in front of coaches oh, yeah. and you hear one as soon as one coach hears oh he's been offered boom a second coach comes and then third coach comes and it's like yeah. whoa you know yeah, it's yeah. it is just one of those like weird experiences that it's like people don't understand the value of it until you're in it you know, some people might undervalue their basketball because they send off highlights that everyone in Sydney is like, they're really good, bro. Yeah, and yeah. then coaches go, yeah, they're really good, but we don't know what that's like. You know, we don't know what you're playing. You could be playing Monday night um, men's league yeah, and someone just great. came and used the camera real quick, you know. Yeah. So that when you get over there and you play AAU and you play like in the NY to LA and, and all those sort of ones we played in, it's like, okay, like he's here, you yeah, know, like Lachlan Anderson, NY to LA highlights. Oh, oh, so he's been in America. Yeah. We know this other kid. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's the main part when it comes to kids asking like, oh, like what do I do to get to college? It's like, well, you got to work hard. Yeah, obviously. You got to do your skills right and everything. You got to per perfect like your craft, right? Like if you're a good defender, defend, yep. be a better defender. Or if you're a good mm -hmm. shooter, keep working on your shot. Yep. But being in front of these coaches and being in America on a tour like that just changes everything. 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 Yeah. It's like you it's like the door opens. You look you kinda hear you almost look through it like a like a keyhole kind of. Yeah. But then once you like go over there, it's like it the door is like opened. It's yeah. busted open then. Yeah. 
So when like obviously you had recruiting and you picked the school and everything and describe the feeling like when you committed to the school. Oh, it was just like a big sigh of relief. Like, yeah. oh, okay, because then like the uncertainty was the was the hard part. Like, mm-hmm. or like, oh, okay, this coach isn't really like committing to me. Like, am I? Yeah. Do I? Does he really want me? Um, but yeah, once I found a place where like wanted me and wanted me to go there and hoop, I was like, okay, like now I know what to like. Coach wants me to do. I know what where I'm going to be living. I know, you know, it was just kind of having that certainty after that. It was just like a oh. And it kind of let me like prepare for what, what was next. And that was good. Yeah. So did you always have the dream to play college basketball? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From like when I started playing, what, from when I started playing, which was around about 12, yeah. I like pretty much instantly was like, oh yeah, like that's, I'd want to go do that. Do that. Yeah. Because I had like cousins who, um, I had an older cousin who went over there and played yeah. like college uh, ju- Juco played like uh-huh. baseball over there. And then I also had like my old, other older cousin, Jaden Weldon went over yeah. there and played. So it, I was like, yeah, it was something I wanted. Yeah, it was something you always wanted to do. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Like, it's that college dream, you know. As soon as you realize it, it's sort of like you want to do it. You yeah. want to, you know. Like, yeah. And it's a weird feeling because I was like, oh, I want to play college basketball. I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. But I was like, how? You know, like, yeah. we're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, well, how do I do it? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. and then it's just like Reese just came out of nowhere. Like, of nowhere. I went to one camp at Minto. He's like, look, we're going on a tour in a month. Like we've got one or two spots left. Like, would you want to come over? Oh, and I'm really? like, I've just met you, even? Reese. Yeah, man. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. Wow. So, so one of the guys, Brandon D'Souza, who was on my tour, mm. he was already planned on going. I'm just like, whatever. He came over to our house one day. He's like, Lock, like it's it's bring a friend to the camps. Like that's how Reese used to do it. He used to be, oh, okay, you get like a fifty percent discount, or whatever it was, right? Like if you bring a friend, refer a friend, like it is at the facility, yeah. but for the camps. Okay. So he's like, just come along, do it. Like school holidays, like just come to Minto. It was just up the road from our house, like where MacArthur Heat used to play. Oh, okay. uh, it's where I grew up playing prior to going to Bankstown. Oh, yeah. So it was weird. It was like a coming back sort of moment. And he's like, come on, like, just do it. So I did the camp and I was, I was playing and everything. And Reese was just like, who are you? You know, and I'm oh, like, yeah. who are you, Reese? Like, I don't know yeah, who you yeah, are right. either, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, he was just like, look, come on tour. And I was like, oh, I don't know. We, right. you know. we have three teams and like, you'll be on one of them. You can come and play and just do your thing. Like, I think you can play college basketball. Like, all right. And it happened, you know, yeah. and it was like, whoa. Okay, now I can actually think maybe I am going to play college basketball, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah. that's where it all sort of kicked off. And that's why I credit a lot to AUSA in getting me to that point, you know. Oh, for sure. Because no one else was going to do it for us Mm-mm. at all. No, no one, you nah. know. That's the craziest thing. They're just bridging that gap which is awesome exactly so like explain your college basketball experience oh it was great yeah. you know i well you know it's just like being like just love being in the gym mm-hmm. you know like getting to do that every day and mm-hmm. like but also kind of getting used to like being taking it seriously taking it to another level like you know weightlifting every morning yep. and then practice in the afternoon and then trying to get shots up in at some point other mm-hmm. in at around your class schedule in the day you know, just trying to organize your time better mm-hmm. and just, you know, be a more, like, well-rounded, like, individual. But also, like, you know, you've got to get your classwork done, too. It's so a lot. Say. There's yeah. a lot on your plate. It's a lot. And then you got to remember, like, oh, i got to eat. Because, like, sometimes, like, you'll, like, go weightlifting and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm running late to class. And then, like, it'll be, like, 3 o'clock and yeah. practice is in, like, an hour. And you're like, oh, I haven't eaten yet. Like, know. you know what I mean? So it was just, like, learning how yeah. to, like, manage every part of your life to, yeah. to, to succeed. And what so, was the best thing for college basketball for you? Oh, like, so for me, it was probably getting back at like a uni. I lost, so like my first school uh-huh. when I was at, uh, in St. Louis, like we played this, we, we had a pretty bad season and then we ended up losing to this team by like 30 or 40, mm-hmm. right? Two years later, fast forward, they transferred conferences to my new school, which is yeah. where I transferred to. And, um, and then we, we beat them like in yeah. OT at their place. Uh, I had 20. It was like, yeah, it was a it good was, moment. Yeah. It was like, that was, that was probably the best. Yeah. yeah that was a good day. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. good. That's good. That's one of those games that you, you will always remember. You're oh like, yeah. Okay. This was great. You yeah, know, that like, was a good day. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, cause like, it was cause my best mate, like 
he just got into the, the starting lineup. Yeah. And then he hit like a buzzer beat a three to send it into OT. Really? And yeah. It was like, yeah. It was, yeah, it was just one of those games. It was one of those days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was like highlighted. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's sick. It was mad. So you've done college now. Like what, what are your goals moving forward? Like what do you want to do? I want to play professionally. Like yeah. I want to, yeah, I want to go overseas though, hopefully. Uh-huh. I want to try and, um, I'm trying to go over to Europe now. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the main goal, man. Yeah. You think college set you up for that? Like helped oh, you with that? For sure. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. Because I, it just made me adapt to like yeah. trying to be a professional kind of it yeah. like kind of gave me time to also figure out mm-hmm. where like kind of the route I was going to take to try yeah. to get there yeah. but yeah so it definitely helped out with that for sure yeah so like now in the like in Australia especially like more in Sydney area as well it's getting mm-hmm. better but like they've brought this NBL one out like youth league like yeah. all of this stuff's happening so a lot of people might be actually like on the fence about like Australian uh, or the US, you know, because they're like, oh, well, yeah. I'll just stay home and like play NBL one. We didn't really have that opportunity before no. we left for college. But like for you, do you think if you stayed in Australia, you would have like developed the way you did when you went to the US? Oh, no way. No, there's no way. Like I just no, because there wouldn't have been any reason for me to change what I was doing mm-hmm. before I left. Yep. So um, and when I went over there, it kind of helped me find my identity a little bit more as a player. Yep. Um, it, it let me figure out like what I was good at and what I wasn't good at mm-hmm. and what I could be like could be good at and what I couldn't be good at like you know just like yeah. doing the whole SWOT analysis I guess yeah, you could say exactly. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. so but yeah like just doing that like over over there was it helped me adapt like because you know like diamonds don't like they don't they come because of pressure yep and if you you don't you're not gonna like adapt if you don't have anything yep. pushing you to get be better so going over there like being out of my comfort zone mm-hmm. um just helped me for sure like it wouldn't have developed as a person either just, yeah like, yeah it's all, it, everything moves forward when yeah. you're over there you, you oh for sure become your own person you learn how to do things on your own you learn how to do school you learn how to mm. like put everything together at once like people think yeah. it's all sunshine and rainbows and yeah. oh i get to play basketball but like you have to slot your schooling, your homework, your basketball, your lifting, your shooting, your extra work, yep. plus eating, like you said, plus getting the right amount of sleep. Oh, yeah. It never happens. Nah, no, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like it, everything yeah. is like pushing on itself. Yep. Yeah, you got to like, you just got to, yeah. Just, it's adapting, man. It's, yep. it's the thing. Every day is just like, a, like all right, I got to do a little bit more here, a little less there, yeah. almost. That's literally what it was. What advice would you have for people that, you know, are chasing the college dream, the AAU dream? Like, what would you say to them? like advice wise if you're serious take it seriously you know yeah. like if um that that's my advice is just like you know there's information out there to like figure out how to get over there i mean uh-huh. you know obviously AUSA is a great like yeah like bridge to do that <laughs> um but yeah like just like look up what the divisions are yeah. look up how the play style is um what the rules differences are because there's rule d- changes from mm-hmm. here over to over there yep and it just yeah like be serious about it so yeah. like do your research and figure out how how you can get that done just break it down into little steps and then you'll, yeah, you'll get there exactly and do good in school oh you don't have to do great oh in school. no yeah <laughs> no yeah just do decent at school just, just do good and do yeah just do decent like, try your hardest at school yeah but don't be terrible at school because yeah. if you're terrible you're not going to college no you need to be eligible yeah right? so that's yeah. that's one of the funny things no and like too. i forget about that but like yeah. that's like something people just like yeah didn't doing the eligibility about. center what Mate, mess. oh that oh, thing mess. was a joke <laughs> i was like I was pulling out my hair out for that stuff. Even, and I was like, I, I was a decent yeah. student. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it was pretty, it was actually pretty smooth for me. Yeah. But even then it was a headache, but I couldn't imagine for someone who was like, if no. it was, yeah, no. Nah. No, when you're on the edge. Oh, yeah. you're on the edge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No it's way. like a fence, yeah. Yeah, nah, no way. Oh, that would be it. Oh, <laughs> no. Nah. Well, thank you for coming in, bro. Nah, we, uh, we really appreciate you. Everyone's going to love, you know, your journey and everything about it. Um, AUSA OG is what's going to be written out as because that's it you were there yeah we're in the trenches oh for sure I've been looking I've been looking for some photos from Shaw but I can't find any that that I've got like a few there's like one I've got yeah Uh, yeah I could I'll send it to you yeah you have to send it yeah I'll put it right in the thumbnail all right yeah (laughs) thank you brother thank you everyone for watching have a good one